friend, welcome back to Acre Homestead. I am so glad you are here right now in my kitchen with me because that means we're getting the day started. This has been one of those days where I've been trying all day to get this day started and it's taken a while. So it's already 1020 and we are gonna be doing some really fun things. First thing, I need to make some tea so we can, I need to make up some kombucha. It's been two weeks and so it's time to make another batch. So I just have some water in the microwave that I'm gonna heat up so I can make some tea. This morning I did get a baked oatmeal in the oven for Josh. This is a blueberry baked oatmeal that I made with blueberries from the last homestead. So this is out cooling. We are gonna spend the day in the grow room starting a bunch of seeds and then we are gonna go out into the garden and hopefully we're gonna be planting out all of our tomatoes and peppers today, which is a huge day because we are past our last frost. Our nighttime temperatures are in the high 40s and our daytime temperatures are 60 and it's supposed to be 82 this week, which is crazy. So I wanna be out in the garden. Josh is actually working from home today on his lunch break. He's gonna help me build some tomato trellises. And so I wanna spend as much time in the garden as possible. So I'm gonna pull out a freezer meal. So I need to figure out what freezer meal I wanna cook. I already have breakfast taken care of. I want something really, really easy. Let's see. Hmm. You know what, maybe we'll do some stroganoff. That sounds good. So that's what this is. I'm just gonna pull this out. Or maybe we should grill something because this is all meat that is marinating. But let's see. No, because I don't want to make sides. I'm just going to pull stroganoff out. I'm going to set this in the sink and I'm just going to let this thaw for maybe an hour or two. And then I'll pop it in the fridge so that when it's time to make dinner tonight, I don't really have to do any cooking other than reheat it and make some noodles and make some sort of veggie. So we'll see what veggie I end up making. I do have some salad spring mix in the fridge, so if I don't feel like cooking a side vegetable, then I can just pull out that spring mix and we'll have a side salad with dinner tonight. So I'm gonna get, I wanna make two gallons of kombucha. So I'm gonna get in here 20 tea bags and I'm gonna let this just sit while we head out into the grow room and we start a bunch of seeds today. I'm just gonna cover this and we'll let that sit and we'll be back to deal with it in a little bit. I am so excited to get these plants out in the ground. I started my pepper plants and tomato plants probably about two weeks too early. So next year I know this is definitely a little bit different of a growing zone than my last homestead. And so you can see just how big <laughs> these plants are. They're definitely a little bit bigger than they need to be going out into the garden but I'm really excited that today's the day we are going to be building trellises. Before we get to any planting, I'm gonna take all these tomato and pepper plants, put them outside. They have been hardening off every few, every nice day. I take them outside and I let them just enjoy the sunshine. Well, we're gonna bring these down to the garden today, so I'm just gonna get them out of here and then we will start some seeds. It'll be nice not having to manage all these really huge plants in the grow room anymore. I can officially plant anything and everything out in the garden right now because it is past our last frost date, but the plants that I'm gonna be starting indoors today, I wanna to start them inside so that I can keep a little bit closer eye on them. We have the irrigation system in the beds but it's not fully set up yet. And because I wanna start some things from seed, we're not gonna be getting any rain now for the foreseeable future. I want them in here so that I can keep a closer eye on them than putting them out there and having to go out there and water them in that germination stage. Cause that is crucial that once seeds go in the ground, whether it's inside or outside, that they stay as moist as possible. Because if they dry out and they haven't finished growing and germinating, they're gonna die. I don't want that. There it is. All the peppers, tomatoes, celery, all of this stuff technically can get planted out today, but we will just see how far we get. 
I'm gonna need a lot of help getting those trellises in the garden beds. While I wait for Josh's help though, we can get going on now starting some seeds. I did purchase some flowers and things to fill out my wine barrels that I purchased last year. And I'm gonna reuse these containers because they're really nice and big, which is exactly what I want for what I'm gonna be planting. So what I'm gonna be planting today from seed in the grow room are summer squash, winter squash, cucumbers. Those things don't really like to be transplanted. Technically, I could direct sow those into the ground. But like I said, I don't have irrigation out there yet. I mean, it's in, but it's not functioning yet. And I want to keep a very, very close eye on them. In the past, I've always had way better success purchasing those starts and putting them in the ground than direct sowing them. Last year I planted about, I don't know, 25, 30 different seeds to grow some different pumpkins. And I only got two that germinated in the garden. So even though most experts say it's best to direct sow them, that's just not been my experience. So I'm gonna go ahead and get them started in these pots that as soon as they germinate, and I know the seed has germinated, I will be able to transplant them out into the garden before the roots get all bound and tangled. That's why squashes and pumpkins and zucchinis don't like being transplanted because they really don't like their roots being messed with. So if I can try to just get them to germinate and then get them in the ground as soon as possible, hopefully they'll be happy. And hopefully I will get some plants out of it <laughs> because I usually purchase my squash starts, but whew, veggie starts have gotten so expensive. Even where I used to buy them for a very affordable price, they had doubled in price the last year. So I'm gonna do my very darndest to get my own pumpkin squash, or pumpkins and squash and cucumbers started this year myself. I do have a bag of my favorite Vermont compost, so we're gonna start them in this. I've just had such amazing success with this this year. I was able to get some more of it. It was sold out for a while and that was very sad. <laughs> Probably gonna use this whole bag. I filled up 10 trays and now I get to figure out what I'm gonna put in them. Now this is the fun part. This is where I get to go shopping in my seeds and I'm gonna figure out what exactly I'm gonna be starting. I know that we're gonna start some cucumbers. So I got some cucumbers. Josh and I like cucumbers. We don't love them. So I'm not gonna start a bunch of them but I know I need to get some started this year or today. And then up here is where I have my summer and winter squash. So I'm, I'm gonna go through and just pick out what I want to start. Right now is where all the possibilities are still alive. <laughs> right now when I go through and I figure out what seeds I want to start is when I just have all the faith in the world that everything's going to grow and produce a ton and everything is going to be successful and until time proves me otherwise, this is the part where I just feel so much possibility. Sometimes my hopes and dreams are squashed by reality of the lack of knowledge I might have as a gardener or the weather or whatever it might be. But for now, I have all the hopes and dreams in the world that all of these seeds that I'm gonna be picking out today are gonna to produce something for me. Winter squash and summer squash are some of my favorite things to grow. It always surprises me when a big pumpkin grows. It's like mind blowing to me. So I just picked out my winter squash, summer squash, cucumbers, and I, I think that's all. I mean, I have so many things I should be planting today. I should be planting carrots and bush beans and black beans and sunflowers and all the things, but I only have so much time today. So we're gonna get as much done today as possible. And the number one priority are the winter squash, summer squash, and cucumbers and getting those tomatoes in the ground because those need to be in the ground because they've just gotten way too big. 
in their little container. So that's the one thing about being a gardener, now being a mom, being someone who's living life and trying to function. It always feels like it's just trying to juggle and prioritize what is the most important thing at this moment and try not to get overwhelmed by the possibility of doing everything. Right now, I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna enjoy picking out which pumpkins and zucchinis we're gonna plant. We're gonna get our tomatoes and peppers in the ground and we're gonna let ourselves breathe and not stress that we haven't put beans and black beans and green beans and carrots and all the things in the ground because we have all year to grow those things. So anyway, just a little bit of what's going on in my head, trying to convince myself to not stress that we don't have everything in the ground today. All right, so the fun part here, going through these pumpkins. Oh, I love growing winter squash. It is my favorite, one of my favorite things to grow. Let's see. I don't like growing sugar pie pumpkins. I grew these the first year and they don't produce a lot. The pumpkin flesh is watery and you can make pumpkin puree to make pumpkin pies and pumpkin breads and pumpkin muffins out of any winter squash almost. And sugar pie pumpkins are not the best. What my favorite are, which I need to find in here, I know I bought them, but I just have to find the seed sweet meat. It's a rich, deep orange color and it's not watery, so it's great. Uh, but what produces a ton and has been so prolific for me over the years has always been Cinderella pumpkins. They grow a ton, which is awesome, but they are a little bit more watery. So I'm gonna grow these because I know that they've been pretty easy to grow in the past. I'm just gonna go through and figure out what I wanna plant. I figured out my winter squash I'll show you in just a second but now it's time to figure out my cucumbers I don't have the cucumbers I've loved growing in the past as seed because I've always purchased those as starts so I have to go through and figure out which cucumber I want to start this year Now I need to figure out my summer squash. And I forgot to order summer squash seeds. So I just picked these zucchini seeds up at Wilco when I was there last. Here we go. So this is what I'm gonna be growing or attempting to grow this year. I'll put pictures up so you can see what everything looks like, especially from these Johnny seeds because they don't have a picture on them. But this first one that I'm gonna be growing is a little white pumpkin. This is gonna be a decorating pumpkin. I love to decorate with little white pumpkins in the fall, so that's why I'm growing these. And then we have a hybrid butternut squash. And I'm going with some hybrids because I wanna to try to maximize my yield. This is a 100 day variety. We have our Cinderella pumpkin. And this is a beautiful, I don't know how to say that, this is a beautiful, beautiful pumpkin. I really wanted to grow it last year. I didn't get anything to come to fruition. It's 125 days to maturity. And we will see if we can get any of this by starting the seeds indoors. I have wanted to try growing a pink banana squash since I became a gardener and I have never gotten it to grow. So we're gonna try again this year. This is supposed to be really good for making into pumpkin purees, of course, Spaghetti squash, I'm not gonna grow very much of this because they're very prolific and I don't love it, but I like it. So we'll grow one plant if we can get it to grow. I'm gonna to try to grow a few of these sweet meats because like I said, they are my absolute favorite. And then just for fun, we are going to try to grow an Atlantic giant pumpkin. This pumpkin variety holds the world record for being the largest pumpkin. So we're gonna try that. And then over here, we've got a couple different varieties of zucchini and yellow squash. This is Golden Glory, this is a hybrid, and it is a 50 day to maturity, and it is a yellow summer squash. Over here, we have a white summer squash. This is an Italian variety, and it says that it can mature in 45 to 55 days. If we get something at 45 days, that is gonna be incredible. 
it's a bush variety. And then this is just the zucchini I picked up at the store. Normally I grow Black Beauty, but this is what they had, so that's what I bought. And then I might try to grow these yellow zucchinis. I don't know, we'll see, but I pulled those out as well. And then I have a muncher cucumber that I got from MI Gardener. And then I have a, just another cucumber that was free from Baker Creek. And both of these are spineless cucumbers. For some reason last year, my zucchinis did horrible. You usually think of zucchinis as being one of those vegetables when you grow that you just can't give enough of it away because they're so prolific. I don't know what happened last year, but I had a terrible, terrible harvest. I had enough to enjoy fresh, but all the zucchini that I preserved was actually from my neighbor. They were so gracious and they had enough to share. And so I was able to put up a quite a bit zucchini because of their generosity. So I am gonna take two seeds. I go back and forth whether I want to start my starts with two seeds or if I wanna do it with one, but I'm gonna do two just to help maximize my probability of getting starts. So let's see, I'm gonna do three of those with these zucchinis. I'm definitely gonna have to get more containers out because I don't have enough. So I'm gonna mark these containers. This is the prime example of gardening is so personal and it's so dependent on your climate, your situation, what works best for you. Like I said, most gardening experts recommend just planting your pumpkin seeds directly into the ground and not starting them indoors. Well, I've had pretty poor f success when I do it that way, and I don't know if it has to do with a watering issue, if the seeds aren't being watered enough to germinate. I don't know if birds or mice are getting the seed, but for me, this method has worked just so beautifully. It's probably the way I will do it from now on, even though technically these four varieties, melons, cucumbers, and squash, don't really like to be transplanted that well. It kind of gives them a little bit of transplant shock. It, it stunts their growth just a little bit, but then I've had success from there on. When I've tried direct, direct sow them, I don't even get them to germinate. So if my plant, you know, kind of stunts out just a little bit, but I get a harvest out of it, that's something that I'm willing to <laughs> sacrifice because in the end, my goal is to get a pumpkin or a squash. <laughs> and so that is why I am doing it this way this year. And Spoiler alert, they are all in the ground. I planted them out into the garden yesterday and almost all of them germinated. A couple of them unfortunately did not, but probably I had about, this is just a guesstimate, but a 90% germination rate on everything. So some of them I did have to do a second planting to try to get them to germinate. Time will tell if they end up germinating, but just figure out what works best for you in your garden and run with it. So that's what I'm doing here. All right, so I didn't get very far. I got 90%, I would say, done. I didn't get these three things planted yet because I ran out of my pots. And I have more pots that the tomatoes are in. So as soon as I get the tomatoes and peppers in the ground, then I can come back in here and finish planting. So the things that I didn't get planted yet are the little white pumpkins, the spaghetti squash, and the hybrid butternut squash, but I thought I had more winter squash seeds and I have a whole nother container of winter squash seeds. I was thinking, I really thought that I had more and I do. And I'm really glad that I thought and I looked for these because there's a couple other pumpkins in here that I've always wanted to grow and I tried to grow them last year and they didn't do anything. And that is this Long Island cheese pumpkin. So we're gonna attempt to grow that this year. And then the other one is a Jardel. I have grown Jardel before. They grow really well. These get huge. I grew like a 40 pound one one year. And then this is what I wanted. Let me see. Okay, this is what I thought I had that I didn't couldn't find. And that's the Jack B. Little Pumpkin. I really like decorating with these little pumpkins. So I'm glad I found that. So I'm gonna grow that as well. And then I, I have like three or four seed packets of sweet beet because that's my favorite, but I don't need to grow any more of those. And then I want to grow Long Island cheese. I've always wanted to grow that as well. And then I have, I might or might not, depending on if I'm going to or not, plant 
these white pumpkins. This is just another little white pumpkin. And then here is a stacking white pumpkin. I really want to decorate my front porch with pumpkins that I grew myself this year. And so that's why I would grow this one, but we'll just see. I've never tried this one before. It's a, it's a snow white variety with rich orange flesh. This pumpkin makes a unique doorstep decoration that tends to act more like a squash. Medium sized fruits that have a slightly flatter appearance with slight ribbing most often enjoyed for decor. These pumpkins are suitable for pies and to eat the seeds. So that's a question mark, but I need at least this many more containers before I can come back in here and plant these. So at least we've got started and I've got my seeds picked out here. So I'm gonna set these up here because I know that those are for sure ones that I want to plant. And then here are the ones that are maybe. So I'm gonna put that there. I'm gonna get these watered in really well. It's amazing how time flies. I think it is lunchtime for Josh, so he might be able to come out and help me go ahead and get those tomato trellises up. But first, I'm gonna give these a very, very good drink of water. And I'll probably water them tonight as well when I plant the rest of those seeds. Alrighty friends, Josh is out here, he's already working. I think I grabbed everything I need, but I've already made two extra trips into the house, so we'll see if I need to go back in again. I grabbed my coffee because I never finished that, and then I got Josh some ear protection because he is going to be, well, we'll probably both be doing it, but we're gonna be pounding in tea posts. And so this is the plan here, let me share with you that. So first off though, I've got to show you what I saw when I was walking in here a minute ago, see if I can find it again. Can you see that right there? That's a little bit of green. So this was right there too. This is lettuce we planted. Oh, there's a ton of it. There's a ton of it coming up. So that's exciting. But what we're gonna do is this whole back area is gonna be tomatoes. Each one of these five beds along the outside is gonna have a tomato trellis on it. So Josh is gonna help me build these. And I'm also gonna enlist Josh's help to finish building out the pea trellises. I started building these the other day and then I can build these trellises by myself, but it just takes me a whole lot longer. And Josh and I can come out here and we can crank it out real quick. So I've got three beds that need pea trellises and then I wanna do some arches too, but tomatoes, peas are priority. So we'll see how far we get. So Josh has already dropped off some tea post and we are going to do three tea post per bed for these trellises. This is my absolute favorite way to trellis indeterminate varieties of tomatoes. So he's dropped them off. If you missed the landscape fabric project, my dad and I put landscape fabric on all the beds except for five of them because I ran out of soil amendments and well actually six of them and this is one that I definitely want landscape fabric on so I am getting to put the landscape fabric on it. I cut it to the proper size. I do make sure that the landscape fabric is probably a good like six inches longer than necessary on each side. And then I take a little butane torch and I just run it along the outside edge so that it doesn't fray. I've got to remove the initial piping for the irrigation here, so that's what I'm doing. And then I will get the landscape fabric back on and I will get that in place. Josh is working on getting the T-posts where they need to go and then I go and help him grab a cattle panel. This is how I did my tomatoes last year for the first time and it worked really really well. So per cattle panel they're 16 feet long and I think they're four feet tall 
and it really helps if you have three T posts per cattle panel. And it really, it helps if you have two people <laughs> to do this. I have done this by myself and it is doable, but it is very cumbersome. They are wieldy and it is difficult. So right now what we're trying to do is decipher where exactly we want to attach those cattle panels to the T-post. And we realize that we need some sort of jig to get up underneath the cattle panels so that we can prop one side up and then I can hold the other side while Josh attaches them. The tomatoes that I'm putting on here, I mentioned they are the indeterminate variety of tomato. And an indeterminate variety of tomato is one that will continually grow and produce throughout the growing season until one, it becomes diseased, or two, frost kills it. And so they get really tall and really lanky. And so it helps to have a really tall trellis. Tomatoes are vines, they want to grow and grow and grow, and they don't really wanna grow straight up. And so this has been a really good way to tame them. All right, I have all of the bed's landscape fabric that I'm gonna landscape fabric. I have one more bed down here that doesn't have landscape fabric on it. And I think what I'm gonna do is landscape the top four rows, and then the bottom row down here, I'm not gonna landscape fabric. Right now, the landscape fabric is feeling a little bit constrictive to me because I can't just come out here and like plant whatever I want wherever I want. I have to either move the landscape fabric out of the way or I have to melt a hole. And so time will tell whether that this works well for me. I'm gonna give this year a go. This bed, these beds right here don't have landscape fabric on them. Two of them have potatoes, two of them have onions. And that one right there doesn't have anything yet. And we'll just see if I landscape fabric that. But I really wanna give it a go. And I might love it when weeding season comes. Right now it's not really weeding season. Not much is growing. I have picked a couple weeds here and there. But I think time will tell whether this works well or not. We'll just have to see. Is that gonna be our jig? If you think this is tall enough. Oh yeah, it's plenty tall. Well. Oh, ideally it would be a little bit taller than that. It's hard to find two things that are the same height. What if we stack those on top of each other and then I just hold the other side? <clears throat> Does that make sense? That is what we end up doing. We put those two blocks of wood underneath one side. I hold the other side while Josh gets attached. He's putting one wire attachment on each T-post and then moves to the next one so that we can just get it attached. And while he is then putting the rest of the attachments on it, then I can be working on something else. So this is very strategic on where I placed these tomato plants. I put these tomato plants on the back side at the very beginning of the garden because this garden downhill faces south. And so I didn't want these tomato plants in the middle of the bed or in the front of the bed on the downhill side because then anything behind it would be shaded out. So that's why there is going to be a row of tomatoes along the whole back side of each one of these beds. And in the front, I end up planting a ton of different things. I am not one that just has one variety of crop in one bed. Well, that's not true. I do have a couple of those, but in general, I like to mix up what I have in the bed and these tomato beds end up being filled with tons of different things and I'm excited to share with you and show you kind of what I've done with that. I do want to share though that something I've learned since I planted my tomatoes is that tomato plants and pepper plants do not like to be planted out in temperatures under 50 degrees at night. This is my fourth year gardening, and I did not know that until a week ago. <laughs> so I planted out these tomato plants, and I do end up planting out my pepper plants in the garden when the temperatures drop below 50 degrees. It's in the high 40s, and it won't kill them because it's not a frost, but it will stunt their growth. And that could be part of the problem, why I've never had huge success growing bell peppers is that I'm stunting my pepper plants. It's too late now, they're in the garden, they're still alive, they look good, they just really haven't grown at all since I put them in the garden. So I just wanted to share that with you. 
so you can learn from my mistake or just lack of knowledge. I started bringing some tomato plants down here because I helped Josh for just a second and then he can kind of take over. So I kind of wanted to start bringing the tomato plants down so that I could start figuring out what I want to go where. And I could start planting the ones on the far end. He already has two up. And so I could start planting, but I have so many tomatoes, way more tomato plants than I need. So I have to go through them and kind of figure out which tomato plants I want to plant where. And look at these. These are the Paul Robitson tomatoes. I mean, they're massive. They already have some flowers on them, so they definitely need to get into the ground. <laughs> they're way bigger than needs to be at this point. I'm so proud of these tomato plants. So I just have to figure out what I want to put where. I'm going to grow the indeterminate tomatoes along this trellis back here, the ones that Josh is working on. And then my determinate tomatoes, which are my Roma tomatoes, those are going to go in this bed here. So all these tomatoes are Romas right here. And what I've done is I've started organizing the tomatoes by variety. So I can then figure out how many of each variety I have. And then I can choose the healthiest looking ones. And then I will start planting them. So I'm just going to continue to bring down tomato plants and organize them until Josh tells me he needs his help. So here we have it. I take some time and I just go through and I take each one of these trays and I organize my tomatoes based on one tray is going to be bed one, so the second tray is going to be bed two, and so on and so forth. And it does take me quite some time while Josh is putting in all these tea posts to kind of figure out what order I want them to be in. And I put about eight to nine tomato plants per bed. That's probably planting them pretty densely, but that's what I did. So I put, I'm organizing right now the indeterminate varieties of tomatoes. The Roma tomatoes, like I mentioned earlier, those are determinate varieties of tomatoes. And the reason I'm not putting those on a cattle panel trellis is in um, determinate varieties of tomatoes are more of a bush type plant. They grow to a determined size and they put on all their fruit at one time. And so those are the type of tomato varieties that work really well with tomato cages. It is very difficult to keep a indeterminate variety of tomato in a tomato cage. They just usually are not big enough to handle the growth that that variety of tomato plant can withstand or put on. So I thought I grew an exorbitant amount of tomatoes, way more than I was gonna need. Well, I think I grew about the right amount for me, plus I'm gonna gift it to two of my neighbors and my mother-in-law. So whatever I don't use is not gonna go to waste, but I've got one bed lined up here, one bed here, the start of another bed here. And now Josh needs my help. So I am gonna go help him. He has all the tea posts in for all five of the beds. So I just need to help him get the cattle panels on there. So it's pretty, pretty exciting. He's still eating his breakfast, even though it's like 3.30 or something. Once Josh got all the tea posts in, then I stepped in and I helped him get the cattle panel, or I should say, he helped me get the cattle panels on these trellises. I was so grateful he was able to take some time out of his afternoon to help me get these up. It is a beautiful, beautiful day on this day when we are out here. I am not used to it being so sunny. It's definitely the nicest day of the year. I think it was like 65 on this day. Well, that's not true. It was really nice when we were working with my dad. It was just so beautiful. And I was so, so grateful to be out in the sunshine on this day with Josh kind of getting another project done. Once we got the panels up, then it was the fun part. I got to actually put these tomato plants in the ground that I started about eight weeks ago. It was March 23rd when I started these tomato plants, and I'm not sure the date that I'm actually putting them in the ground. I, oh, you know what, I did, I did document it. I wrote it down, so let me look it up when I put these tomato plants in the ground. It was April 26th. Look at me being really good at documenting. That's awesome. It's definitely 
great when I have a record of when I did things. So I'm that is one of my goals this year and I am being able to stick to it, which is great. So this plant here is a tomatillo plant. I end up planting three of these. One of them is destroyed by a slug. So that is our number one pest for me in the Pacific Northwest are slugs and aphids. And one of the one that I'm about to plant right here, the next day I went out there, it was all sad and wilty. And I thought, oh darn, I, it was because I planted it on this sunny day. Because ideally when you plant starts out, it is best to do it on an overcast day or in the evening. But you know, sometimes you just do what you gotta do. And on this day was when I had time to plant these and that's when they got in the ground. And the next day I went out there, the little tomatillo plant was on its side, all shrivelly, and I thought, well, that was my fault. And then about a week later, I took a closer look at it and I realized, nope, it was a slug that cut it down and it's starting to grow back. So we'll see what happens with it. I'm just gonna leave it and time will tell. So now we have the three tomatillo plants. We're gonna get the tomatoes in the ground. And this is what I'm putting in with my tomato plants. Every year I've gardened, I plant an egg with my tomatoes. Look at the root system on that. Absolutely incredible. And you might think that's a little bit weird, but what that's supposed to do, I don't know if it does because it's the only way I've ever done it, is it's supposed to help feed the tomato some calcium. I do break it. The first year I planted the eggs with the tomatoes, I did not break it. And some of the eggs the next year were still whole. <laughs> when I went to plant other things in the ground, I found whole eggs. So definitely you want to break it, crush it up, mix it in with the soil. And I do put a handful of this all-purpose organic fertilizer in with it. And then if I had a couple banana peels, I would also put those in there for extra potassium. But I didn't have any banana peels on this day. So an egg and some all-purpose fertilizer was what each one of these tomato plants got. These by far are the best looking tomato plants I have ever grown. And one thing that I learned this year is it does help to have really healthy soil that your start start out in. For some reason when I first started gardening, when you look at soil starting mix, a lot of it is sterile and it doesn't have much nutrients in it. And there's a purpose for that because when you're starting little itty bitty seeds, you want nothing to get in the way. You want them to be able to germinate quickly. But if, if you don't then feed them after they germinate, then they tend to get a little, they don't have the nutrients they need to be to grow really big and strong. So the biggest game changer for me was learning to start my starts in Vermont compost because it's super nutrient and the plants just thrived. And then every time I watered them, I fed them with Neptune's Harvest organic fertilizer and they just look really beautiful. So here's one bed done. I'm gonna get going on the next bed. I did lay out all the tomato plants where I wanted them. What do you think? I just had to come inside to get my husband's hat. I don't own a hat. I need to purchase a hat because I almost had to call it because my face, just too much sun on it. My skin is like, what is this sun? So I came back up here to get the hat, but I thought I would grab some flowers too. I wanna get some of these flowers planted in the garden. I'm gonna push through and just try to get these tomatoes planted. I I always think or try to do more than I, than I know that I can do. I am not gonna to get to planting peppers today. There's just absolutely no way. But if I can push through, get a few flowers planted, get the tomatoes planted, I'll be happy. I have all my tomatoes laid out where I want them and I've moved all the irrigation. So I still need to burn the holes in these two beds here. Those two beds, I already burnt the holes. So what I'm gonna do is I found that it's faster if I go and I just burn the holes and then I'm gonna put an egg in each hole some of the fertilizer in each hole, and then I'll go down and I will start planting them. Instead of doing one hole at a time, that's not very efficient. I'm gonna do a bunch of them at one time. I feel much better out here with the hat on, and I switched my shoes. I had my boots on for safety when we were working with these paddle panels, but it was too warm. I have to find where that blowtorch is. That's the thing about this landscape fabric. 
is everything does take longer because you have to burn that hole in it. And if I was just planting these tomatoes, I would have already been done by now. But time will tell, like I said, what method works the best. Is it worth the upfront effort of burning the holes and then not having to deal with weeds? Time will tell. I need to drink some water and I need to water in my tomatillos. They are looking thirsty. That right there is why I thought that I killed my tomatillos because they, they weren't looking super happy when I put them in the ground. But it, like I said, it was definitely a slug that was the downfall to one of those plants. Now, I do want to mention part of the reason why I was kind of talking about how I wasn't sure if I liked this landscape fabric or not is because I didn't know how to use the butane blowtorch that my husband is my husband's. And so I thought it was really hard to get it started every time I wanted to get it started. I didn't realize I could push that little gray tab on the side to keep the flame going. And so, cause there's a safety on it. So right here, I'm just holding it down and it, it was super kind of awkward to use, but then once Josh showed me how to use it, it is not hard to put holes in this landscape fabric and I am loving it. I was not sure I was going to like it. I was kind of annoyed by it. I was going to give it all, but now that I've been living with it for three weeks, I am really enjoying it. Weeds are starting to pop up in the beds that don't have the landscape fabric. So I think I'm probably gonna go back and put landscape fabric in those beds. I got all the tomatoes planted except for the romas that are gonna go in that bed right there because I ran out of eggs. I need to go inside and get some more eggs, but I wanna document what's planted where so I know for future reference. Starting closest from the greenhouse, we have three tomatillo plants, two Paul Robinson, two Dr. Witchies, and two Trophies. And then coming into this next bed over here, we have two watermelon, three, or excuse me, four Old German, and two Trophy. And then coming this way, this is kind of my random bed. We have Paul Robinson, Dr. Witchies, Wisconsin 55, Wisconsin 55, Wisconsin 55, Moneymaker, Valencia, and those three, I don't know what they are. Those are three that I am not sure what they are. And then in here, we have a bunch of the same ones. We have Wisconsin 55 all the way to here. And then those ones are Martha Washington's. Those are hybrids. And then this is the last bed. This is kind of the cherry tomato bed. We have Clementine, Clementine, Chenoweth, Chenoweth, Valencia, Valencia, large red cherry from Dollar Tree, and Clementine, and then another Dollar Tree one that I, I ran an egg, so I need to do that. Then I went ahead and planted some petunias here, and right over here, I'm gonna go ahead and get some nasturtiums planted. You all know that flowers are something I'm really working on incorporating into my garden, and that is why I started this entire flat of nasturtiums. Nasturtiums, I've had such good luck with growing from seed. Some of the other plants I've tried to grow from seed this year, flower-wise, have not done super great. My second round of zinnias, I did get quite a few zinnias, but my rebecca, oh, I did get quite a few of my echinacea to do pretty well, but my rebecca didn't do super great. I only got two plants out of a bunch. My petunias didn't do super great. My straw flowers didn't do super great, but my nasturtiums all have done really, really well. So if you want an easy flower to grow from seed, nasturtiums is your flower. So here are all of the Roma tomatoes that I'm gonna plant. I'm gonna put tomato cages around these ones. I'm burning the holes in the fabric and then we will get them planted with an egg and the fertilizer as well. Well, there it is. There are 12 Roma tomato plants. So currently, I have all the tomato plants that I'm gonna be planting out for myself. 
These are the tomato plants that I'm gonna gift. I have 23 tomato plants here that other people can enjoy, which I'm super excited about. This is parsley that I need to plant. I'm not exactly sure what I was thinking, thinking I could get all the peppers planted today and more winter squash. I'm gonna wait on the peppers. I'm gonna leave them out and I'm gonna let them actually hang out at, outside all night. They're up still on the patio. I'm gonna give everything a really good drink. This is actually a better time now than it was earlier to water because the sun, I mean, it's not setting, but it's better now than the heat of the day because you can actually burn your tomatoes if you water them at the heat of the day. So I've got the water here. Okay, that was slippery. I needed to take a shower before this, but now I officially need to take a shower. I just happened to slide in a mud, mud, mud pit. I can't even talk, I'm tired. <laughs> this hat has been a game changer. Oh my goodness. Definitely need to get a white brimmed hat. I wouldn't have been able to stay out here as long as I did if it wasn't for this hat. So I'm really grateful <laughs> that my husband had it. Oh my gosh, this is gross. Ooh, that's cold. I'm gonna sit here, it's probably gonna take me 15 minutes or so to get everything watered in. I'm also gonna water the peas and the lettuce that I planted. I just wanna make sure everything stays nice and moist. Um, the tea for the kombucha, I went ahead and threw that in the fridge because I am not gonna to get to that tonight. And I don't have to make dinner tonight. So I grabbed out the stroganoff to make dinner. Well, Josh's mom had asked Josh if she would, if he would go over there and help in his garden. And he said, yes, of course. And so she offered to make us dinner. So I, I went ahead and I put the stroganoff a while back in the refrigerator and we'll probably end up having that for dinner tomorrow because I don't have to cook dinner tonight. So it's been a fantastic day. I can't believe that our tomatoes are in the ground. I can't believe we get to plant our peppers next and start a ton more seeds, direct sow things into the ground. It's not gonna be too much longer before we're gonna be harvesting stuff. I mean, it's gonna be a while, but before we know it, we're gonna be harvesting. So I just wanna say thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. I greatly appreciate every single one of you. And I hope this video was fun, encouraging, whatever it might be. I just hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I can pop a couple of my other videos here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.